the last year shining a light on ventilation as a means to mitigate COVID transmission. I'm very much hoping that this pandemic also will teach us that we really need to do something. Airborne disease specialists say the push for better indoor air quality is long overdue. This is a wake-up moment that we should take advantage of to rethink how we design and our indoor environments. And as more people head back to the office, new standards for in the workplace. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration's latest guidelines recommend maintaining humidity at 40 to 60 percent, as well as using high-efficiency particulate air filters. So between a combination of ventilation and uh, air purification through filtration, you can considerably diminish uh, the hazard of uh, aerosol. And architectural engineers say it's not just COVID that is kept at bay by better ventilation. If we ventilated at higher levels, that uh, we would have fewer sick building syndrome complaints and that people's productivity could improve. However, all that clean air comes at a price and an increase in energy use. It's expensive. Uh, we have to condition that outdoor air to the temperature and humidity of the indoors, and so it's a big concern in terms of energy use. And it's that increase in energy use that might hurt efforts to standardize and improve indoor ventilation as progressives push to reduce greenhouse gas emissions with the Green New Deal. Physicist Lydia Moraska was one of the first scientists to recognize the importance of aerosol transmission for COVID. She says it's time to act. It may sound complicated, it is complicated, but it is possible. So it is possible, we just need to, to realize how important it is.